So welcome, Mark. It's fantastic to have you with us to talk about your book, Whiskey and Wildflowers. And just to introduce Mark, Mark Lamont is a writer who lives on the island of Guernsey with his wife and three cats. Whiskey and Wildflowers is his first novel. So first off, congratulations on finishing and releasing your book. I've seen firsthand um, the hard work you've put into it, and it's been gratifying to be part of the process. Um, how would you describe your book to a friend? Just a few sentences. Um, I think I suppose the, the, I would describe it as as a very personal and emotional journey for someone who's lost you know, their identity almost in, in the person that's most important to them and how they've defined themselves. Mm. Um, and struggling to cope with that um, and almost in spite of the best efforts of their, their friends and their family and their loved ones, uh, finding it very difficult. And it's, it's the journey that uh, David goes through to try and find a way to live um, when everything he, he uh, held dear in, in, represented in Carol um, has been taken away from him. Great. Um, yeah, there's definitely a sense of, 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 of great compassion and heart in the story and it comes through that it comes from, from deeply considered kind of personal experience. Um, what I wanted to ask you about was the writing process. We love to chat about process, as you know, here in our novel. Yeah. Um, so I was curious, what was hardest about the writing process and what did you find most helpful in the process? Uh, I think that the first thing I found was with a big challenge was to take that initial initial idea. I mean, I woke up, I had a, a very, very vivid dream that uh, my wife had died of, of the cancer, which thankfully she, she, I mean, she had cancer, but she recovered from it. And I, I woke up one morning and uh, I, believing she hadn't, and I reached across and she was there. And I think, oh, thank God for that. Um, and... So that was that was the idea, and I I spoke to to Beth about it, and I said, I've had this this idea. I could th- to, to turn that into a novel, and she yeah. loved it, loved it straight away. Um, but then there was a challenge, you know, to turn what was such a compelling idea into you know a seventy, eighty, or well, ended up eighty five thousand word novel. Um, so yeah. that was quite daunting, and I felt a huge sense of responsibility. So that drove me and, you know, kept me, up, kept me on edge at the same time. Um, and I think also just the keep on showing up was, was you know, the challenge because it's two to three hours a day, you know, to to to, to her. And I couldn't have done that without her support, really, because it's basically a question of her sometimes being kicking me upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> she, she watched the telly whilst I uh, I went upstairs and, and, and you know, tried to turn... The, the idea in, into a book. So, nice. yeah, so that, I think the biggest challenge was really expanding that one idea into into a, into a, into a full narrative. And I suppose one of the most helpful parts in was having Beth as a kind of accountability part that encouraged you to sit down and write as well. A- absolutely, and 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 I would say yeah, full credit to to you and to the now novel community because uh, the groups, you know, they they always help you know, kept, kept me going and, and inspired me so i think in yeah. terms of you know the, what the way i managed to turn that that you know to turn that story into into in, that idea into a story was uh, i i i got away from my lifelong of aversion to plotting and, and planning um and stopped being a pantser once and for all uh and i had a very clear idea of the, the journey i wanted to take david through uh, and I had a really, really clear idea of the characters. I, 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 I you know, got inspiration from other other websites that you look around, and and one of them came up with a, a very kind of detailed questionnaire. It was like a starter, and then right. I just expanded that and kind of interviewed my characters. Yeah. Um, and I got to know them, really know them, I think, better than than than, that, than I'd ever done before, and that made it a lot easier for me to to throw things at them because I, I had a yeah. sense of who they were and how they respond. Absolutely. So no, knowing no, very clearly my beginning, middle, end, the challenges that I was going to throw at them um, made it a lot easier for me to to keep the story going. And it's, it's interesting that there were deviations when it came to the actual writing, but the, the heart of the story is pretty much the one I started with when I, when I did my first plan. 
That's very interesting. It definitely comes through that there's a sense of, of, of focus, even in the early kind of beta reading, giving uh, feedback in a manuscript assessment stages, there was that sense of, this, of, 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 of the author having a clear idea of what the scope of the story is and where it's going. So mm. she isn't always in the early stages of, of a kind of feedback process. So it was interesting. Yeah, it's, certainly not be, it's not been my experience before. <laughs> I, think, I think possibly because this was a very personal story, I think that, yes. um, that, I guess that helped. There was, there was a kind of model. But sure. so in the first page, you referenced the work of, of Joseph Turner, his amazing paintings of sky, that kind of quintessentially British artist. And so I wanted yes. to ask you um, who some of your favorite authors, artists, and musicians are that inspire your work. But I just wanted to first read from that description the turn of comparison on the first page. So here's um, the opening, just as a teaser for readers to go and read the book from um, Mark Stubble. As it rises, the sun is captured in the tumbler like something from a Turner painting, amber skies over mist covered fields. The whiskey bottle stands to the side. I can't see the inscription on the back, but I know it's there. From Carol, with all my love, it says. Only I can't hear her voice right now. As I have so often this past year, I'm sitting at my desk in the sunroom looking out. Who are some of the writers and the, the artists and musicians who inspire you the writing? Uh, well, I love Turner. Uh, my 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 dad was an artist. It's actually, just over my shoulder, you see that picture on the wall there of the sea. That that was my dad's. It's beautiful. Um, wow. So I always get quite emotional when I think about him. Mm. Um, and so, and, and I love impressionism. I think that's my so any, any anything like that, anything that plays with light, I've always enjoyed. And, and the sea. Uh, uh, authors are very eclectic. Um, I think it's something I have in common with both the characters in the book. Uh, I love Jane Austen. I didn't when I was at school when I was made to read her. <laughs> but, I, when, when I, but I exactly, you know, uh, and I was a 16 year old boy. I wanted to read action. I wanted to read Hemingway. I didn't want to read right. uh, Jane Austen. But it's, n now, I mean, I, I, I think the fact that it's whiskey and wildflowers is, is, is obviously, you know, exactly. It's so partly. That's, that's very interesting. For that, so. Yeah, that's very yeah, interesting. I, I, it wasn't deliberate, but the fact that that was the title and, and obviously Pride and Prejudice is, is, is cropped up a couple of times in the book along along with uh, with Emma. Um, yeah. But I love crime. I love uh, uh, P.D. James. I, um, I, I, I'm a real big fan of J.K. Rowling's Alter Ego. Um, but yeah, I, I read, you know, widely science fiction, fantasy. I mean, I'm I uh, grew up reading Tolkien, Stephen Donaldson. Um, mm. So, yeah, so, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I will read anything that's well written. Margaret Atwood, obviously. She's, yeah, she's a personal favorite of mine as well. Um, it's yeah, interesting with Austin. Different. With Austin, I did a, an elector on her work in college um, when I studied literature. And the lecturer did this whole extended analysis of how the the kind of burgeoning relationship between Darcy and Lizzie Bennet. There's just an mm. act in grammar, how it shifts. There's something like where he says, um, you are loved by me. And that putting of the, the you of the second person at the front of the sentence, it's a kind of, it's a kind of a facing of the subject and of putting her in the center. And it was such a beautiful yeah. analysis of, of how subtle yeah. and masterful Austin's writing actually is. Cause I think it's so easy for people yeah. to dismiss romantic writing or women's yeah. writing. Most of my favorite authors are women. So it's, yeah, yeah. it's very, very interesting. Um, yeah, that's well, a great It's um, a historical yeah, prejudice that yeah, it would take us a while to get over. Yeah. And then, I mean, I think, I mean, sorry, I was just to say, I think one of my, one of my, one of my aims writing the book was to try and get over some of the, uh, the stereotypes. The, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I was going to say, I mean, I think what is rare for your book as well is that it's rare for men, men's stories, and it's not uncommon. Or there are many men who write about relationships as opposed to say, if you look at the kind of political novels of Gray and Green, or you know, there's a lot of men who write very, very cerebral, intellectual things about politics and these grand big ideas. But personally, I'm always drawn to the character. <laughs> Full stories. There are writers like um, and the great one is Kane Tarrup. He writes these very simple, simple, simple stories that are just real studies of characters and 
and, and human relationships that are just so beautiful and moving. And, and your writing style in some ways reminds me of that, that simplicity. That's, there's a kind of elegance and simplicity and also in, in writing about people as opposed to writing about grand machinations and things. I think that's definitely me. I mean, uh, I've tried writing the other. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, 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 and you end up sort of sounding like you're on a soapbox. Um, yeah. and, and I felt in, 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 in this story, I think, I think you know, the, the emotional heart of it is what I re resonated when I was writing it. And even when I, you know, when I read it back to myself, I think uh, yeah. that's, I think that's my, I think that might be where I'm, you know, at my strongest. Absolutely. Writing, I think. And that segues well to, to my next question, which was, um, the fact that you, you drawn very personal experiences and it's obviously, obviously we um, briefly mentioned it, but, your own wife's cancer scare and in a way yeah. so the story is a traveling down the road not taking what didn't happen in that instance in in that in, in yeah. the story david's wife carol does pass to cancer and so so what drew you to that courageous imaginative path of, of imagining what could have been and really pursuing that down down that road um i i, I think well firstly it was beth you know, reaction to it and and sort of you know I, I, I couldn't have written it if if i if her reaction would have been you know otherwise mm. um but but i think i i felt i i wanted to explore what that would have been um and then, you know like the, the 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 person that i had dreamt i was if like waking up how i i i don't think i would be like david i, th I mean I, I i like to think that i don't have some of his challenges um but and certainly in terms of someone who's lost you know their 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 their, their touchstone um yes. uh, i i wanted to explore what that would be like and and how and what would what would where would that take them and also what might help you know help them along the way maybe pull them back what what would they find to live for and so that was really the journey i wanted to to try and put my poor david character through um, I love that and... because it's, it's it's a kind of counter counter voice that writers have where you look at your life or the things you know and you think what if it were another way or, or thinking yeah. otherwise yeah. I think it was Tom Stoppard who said something like I write the supposition then I then I refute the supposition then I refute the refutation or something like that but it's like yeah. a kind of yeah. I think it also it goes it goes with the territory I think of, of a lot of writers are introverts or introspective or and very analytical and it's a kind of uh, this analytical process of of turning things around and seeing things from other angles and seeing all the possible angles yeah. and I, I can't imagine it's easy to go down that watch the path it, it, at times it was very difficult i mean because again i mean even now we're not you know we're, you know we i we both know that we're never out of the woods yeah um, and i think i think you know I, I suppose again i wanted to to i mean whilst the, the it's a difficult journey for david i still i still think there's there's, there's heart and there's hope in, in this story absolutely um, and and so to, yeah. uh, so the, so that's that's another thing that drove me to write and also art in some ways is a is a rehearsal for life. I mean, when I think of mm. of difficult experiences in life once one goes through, a lot of the time fiction and storytelling has provided a rehearsal space almost for those experiences, whether it's something as universal and, and for some terrifying or, or just generally unknown as, as death or one of yeah. the you know the big things. It it gives us a space to rehearse these experiences and, and, and and explore, explore, yeah, situations that we might not otherwise have had as much courage to go through. So I think, I think literature and writing is so valuable in that sense and how it's almost like you get to live other lives for a little bit of time. Yeah. 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 And I think, I think, I mean, again, as we, you know, this, this story reminded me and, and, and Beth about how precious life is how precious you know our relationship is yeah. um and we, that, not to take the moment for granted but, you know, i'm actually taking a, a, a sabbatical for work in january as, as a direct result of having went, <laughs> gone finished this book it's like you know, oh my god yeah i was right wasn't i i mean this is precious you know yeah, you only yeah. get you only get one one crack at this so you know 
one of my character's great regrets is is not doing things that he might have done. Yes. And so so we're going to Australia for six weeks. But okay. It's so there's, there's it's, life imitating it's, art, I say. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's great. Um, so, so, yeah, on that subject, I also wanted to ask you about, I mean, I think we've covered this a fair amount, but um, grief has been a major discussion topic these last few years with COVID and everything. It's yeah. been quite strange here how for two years everything was so uncertain and there was a lot of sharing off of, of peripheral connections and only really seeing close family, closest friends occasionally in very kind of structured, yeah. uh, reduced ways. Um, and yeah. so so one thing I loved about the story is its deep sense of compassion for grief and for your characters and how they each have their own personal grieving process that isn't always perhaps what someone might say is the right uh, response. Uh, for example, yeah. one of Carol's children going straight into a work situation that turns yeah. out more yeah. complicated than it seems in a personal way. Yeah. But I think there, there's that huge sense of, of compassion for your characters and the, the way the yeah. ways they process grief differently. Um, what are your thoughts on grief as a theme, whiskey and wildflowers, or grief generally? Yeah, well, I think I think it's it's a very personal journey, and I think and it's, I mean I have one of my favourite characters is the is the is the counsellor, uh, Felicity, um, and and I think she 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 sort of helps David realise that you know it, the journey is is there's no right or wrong way to do grief. I mean it's 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 something that you you experience for yourself. And I think, you know, going back to what we touched on earlier, um, I think the idea that men should be, you know, stoic and stiff up the lip, uh, I rebel against that personally and I rebel against it in the book because yeah. I think it's damaging. Yeah, I um, agree. I mean, yes, grief can overwhelm you and define you, and I've experienced that when, when my dad died. Um, so, but, uh, but the recovery from that, which I, I found... Uh, very much, and actually, this is one of the bits. I mean, David isn't me, but he he has he has a, we have a few things in common, and one of them was that I didn't actually get a lot from counselling apart from it made me think I don't want to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> so so I and I, and I I found there was there was something I just found uh, there was something that my wife found for me actually a Tony Robbins tape um, when they talked about gratitude and 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 being grateful for. It, the moments that you did have or all, all the, all the oh, good yeah. things that, that you got from that relationship and actually if David had realized that earlier I think his journey might have been easier uh, I didn't make his journey easy for him and I and I and part of his problem is that he's quite self-aware in some ways yes but also he's very he's also very um so locked up in his grief and it's it's only when he's shocked out of it if you like that he has a chance to actually step through into the other side and I think for me that 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 journey you don't if you can focus on all that's good and all that you had I'm, 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 I think there's an opportunity there for you to to find the the beauty and the and and and, and the hope absolutely for the future but whether I'm right or not is, is <laughs> I guess you only ever find out in the time but yeah I, I think grief, grief is a necessary part of human, the human existence absolutely um but, but then so is finding a way to to be thankful and move on from it is this is the is the is the challenge absolutely there's so much to unpack there that's also very interesting um that, that idea firstly going back a little to the idea of men being stoic or being expected to be stoic and what i love about the story mm. is you have david's kind of slightly more sentimental slightly more Stuck, uh, sorry, not stuck in the mud, <laughs> stick in the mud, <laughs> but more, I uh, think it's stuck in the mud in some ways too, um, kind of personality. Yeah. And, then, and then Carol is a beautiful counter voice to that, and that she's so pragmatic and she sees the light aside. And she's also very self effacing in a way. Both both um, Carol and, and David have a kind of humility and a sense of mm -hmm. their own provisional position in, in relation to things, the fact that you know, one's own subjectivity and point of view and stuff is, is one small stitch in a very big tapestry of life. I mean, is that yeah. and, and and there's a sense of that. But also, yeah, I also love that in that the, the gender roles aren't super typical 
one can't have any kind of preconceived notions around how people of different genders will yeah. react, different people will react. Everyone has their own way of processing things. I mentioned um, with, also with therapy, how for you the experience was a bit in work. I think that also yeah. is, there's also a thing with that of how it's, it very much depends on fit and finding the right person. We have the same yes. way. Oh, Felicity okay. would have been great for me. I mean, yes, if, exactly. I, if I, if I, if I, if, if Felicity is my kind of counselor. I don't know if exactly. You, you, wrote, you, wrote the, you wrote the counselor you, you needed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which exactly. I, think is, I, think, I think part of writing in some ways is wish fulfillment. It's wish fulfillment, yes, it's exactly. fear fulfillment, it's all those things. What was your favorite part or aspect of the book? If you can choose one. Uh, I, I think probably. It's difficult because there's so much I, I, I loved about it. I, mean, I love Carol's irreverence, uh, the theme tune she chose for her own funeral. Yes, um, absolutely. I, 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 the fact I think I, I really almost wanted her to get her wish and to have the the, uh, the alarm clocks playing <laughs> as, as she was as, as she was brought up to, yeah. to, to the to the to the front. Um, I love Penny. Um, the, yeah, the, she's the, a favourite of mine. Has, yeah, I mean, I mean, she just keeps on showing up. Um, mm. uh, I, and as, as I said, I really, I love, I loved uh, Christy. And one of my my, my favourite bits is the bit after. There's, there's a part where David has done something he's very uh, un, uh, ashamed of, and and he stops hearing Carol's voice. Yeah. And he goes to see, and he, when he goes to see Felicity, um, and she talks him through it. And there's that moment where uh, Carol comes back and said, says, "Miss me." Yes, and I love that moment. every time yeah. I, I, I can't, I can't read that even now. I can't even talk about it without getting a little, you know, a little emotion. Um, yeah, because, it, because that for me, that I think that's my favorite moment in the book. That was actually one I think I mentioned to you in the email that, that moved me to tears as well. And I think, I think having been through also, I, I've also done the whole therapy thing. I think on the one hand, it spoke to how incredible it can feel when you do find you do find someone you speak to in that very honest, spoken, narrative way. Yeah. You know about every single neurosis or yeah. whatever it might be or every painful experience yeah. in your life. And and they provide that help to you like a, like a good friend does, but in a way that's, yeah. that's so focused. And it's also so, it's a very difficult thing to do as the another sign, or I think that's the right word, but is, is, is to open yourself and and your thoughts and feelings up to someone who you barely know at all as well. It's a it's a very it's yeah. it's, it's a it's a fear inducing thing to do, but also an incredibly powerful thing to do if you're able to do it and find the yeah. right fit. And I think so yeah. it captured the heart of what is so amazing and transformative about the therapeutic process, but then also it captured also just Ca- Carol's voice and and the reverence yeah. so, in a moment to say something yeah. missed me kind of. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I really I really yeah. love that. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, that moment defines Carol, defines David, and and their relationship. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So, it, 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 as I say, it's, it's funny. I mean, even though I wrote it, even though I've read it a hundred times, there's like proof and proof and proof, as as we've discussed, uh, I, it still gets me. So I, I, I know, at least for me, that that, that works. That's great. Um, so I wanted to ask you also about. Editing, I know from our interactions on the now novel critique groups, you give very thoughtful, considered feedback. Often I read it and I think, oh, I can't, I can't add anything here <laughs> when, when you uh, need to be the first to comment on and, and give your thoughts. Um, so I know you give very good editorial feedback yourself. And I also was curious to know um, what did you find most valuable about editorial assessment and what have you learned through giving other writers feedback? Um, well, first, first of all, to talk about the the manuscript assessment that that you gave me, um, it's you know, I found it invaluable, um, and I, I was you know look, looking through it, uh, comparing the the first draft I mean, with your comments and 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 what ended up in in, in the book, and yeah. I mean there was there was there were so many little things, little subtle things or suggestions, things where. Uh, either I needed to add more more depth, more color, uh, throw in some some dis- person people because it was it was quite a very interior novel yes. uh, in yes. times, um, and actually throwing in a, a a bystander to to bounce light off David. Right. I think it added about seven and a half thousand words to, to for draft one to draft two. Um, 
And most of that was actually expanding on things that, that hadn't quite landed or, right. or kind of colouring in, you know, putting some dark and shade. I like that, colouring in, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I could sort of turn yeah. that, yeah. I, I, yeah, so 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 and it was interesting. I mean, even even just just a little a little nuance here and there that you you'd spotted something that hadn't quite worked as I as it worked in my head. Right. And see, and and, and I, so I was comparing the first three chapters, first time around, and 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 post, and in every way, your 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 comments had helped me make it better. So, I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> It's always no, gratifying, but, you know, gratifying as an editor yeah. to hear that one made a positive. Yeah. Oh, credit, credit, <laughs> absolutely, well, absolutely, no doubt, and and I think, and 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 I try and do that, you know, in the community, try and you know, say to them what I would want someone to say to me, and I think, absolutely, you know, I think, I think that's what I, I mean. I love about the, the feedback groups is that everyone is very generous, and people are very, you know, we're all kind of in it together. We're all yeah. trying trying to be better writers um, mm-hmm. and I definitely feel that I got better helping other people it helped me look at my own writing and think ah actually <laughs> what, what, what I said about that is also very true about something that I've written so I I I, I, I value you know the now novel community tremendously so I I try and give as much to them as they give to me that's fantastic yeah I think I think that's I've also been in some writing circles and What's so wonderful is getting a, a window into someone else's creative process and and a real deep sense of not just who someone is as a person, but having that through their work and 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 their work's evolution as well and what they struggle with and what they what they the ways they grow. Being being part of someone else's creative journey is a wonderful gift. And I feel I've learned a lot more about writing through giving feedback almost than through any kind of text mm. on this is how you write or don't write there's a kind of yeah there's a kind of um, teaching lesson in, in every piece of feedback you give yeah, yeah I, i've definitely felt that i've definitely felt that i've learned i've learned more but they do say that, don't they? that if you want to improve in anything try and teach someone yeah so, so, or, so giving that feedback to definitely um is, is a you can you know throw a light back on your own writing yeah absolutely Great. So, and then lastly, I just wanted to ask, what can we expect from you next? Are there is there anything in development that you can talk about? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've got, well, I've got almost too, almost too many things at the moment, but I mean, I've got. So obviously, I've got the my dystopian novel, which I I got my first the first draft of, which is kind of gathering dust at the moment because other things, the whiskey and wildflowers, completely took it over. Yeah. And, and I was I was in the process of planning out my next uh, sort of book which is uh war in, like in sync with with whiskey and wildflowers as a as a sort of a book about heart and development and personal challenge right. um which is going to be a current working title is called on reflection okay. um, which is about someone who effectively meets the meets themselves as a spirit guide almost mm-hmm. everything it's something i've i've played with a few years ago when i first joined now novel as i started writing that idea um, so that was that was what I was doing. Um, but as you'll have seen on the on the communities, my uh, imagination has been hijacked by mm-hmm. uh, a character called called Leela Cabo, who's who's a who's a detective, um, and she is not happy about the idea of not being my next book. So uh, yeah. so so, <laughs> so yeah. So she's she she well, she's very insistent. She's uh, all I need to do now is to find her a, a, you know a couple of bodies for her to 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 to, to work on. Yeah. Um. And and that's that's. So I, I'm I'm going to let her have her way, and and uh, I'm going to give it a go for Nano Rima and and uh, see that's how brilliant. she does. That's fantastic. A great source I find to find ideas and things is is Reddit as well. The sparks of ideas because I find there are lots of subreddits on specific topics mm-hmm. such as unsolved crimes and so forth that can give one inspiration in those areas. Ah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for chatting to me. It was so great to. Oh, it's- Get more insight into you every day. Okay, thanks, Mark. Uh, th- See you in thanks, the group. Jordan.